Hey guys, Father Time here. We are at Long Beach, California. Birthplace of the MD-11, DC-9, Super 80, or Mad Dog as Delta called it. Currently this is owned by Boeing as they did by McDonnell Douglas. This at one time was the McDonnell Douglas headquarter. Hence the reason I'm here. I'm going to do my origination pre-flight on the Super 80 mad dog in the md83 version in the uh, delivery of my airline that i came from which was uh, american airlines we'll uh, tell some stories why would you want to listen to me because i do have 2,000 hours on the airplane 21,000 overall i retired back september of uh, this year 2023 today is january 15th uh, i want to give a shout out to a guy called mustafa moose like the animal stafa um, he, he streams over on Twitch, but he did a great series, instructional series, on this airplane, which I watched all of his videos. Haven't done a lot of actual hands-on. I'm going to go in here, show you what I've learned. I flew one flight, uh, kind of flailed through it, so I'm going to give this a shot, make a video, and see if it comes out pretty good. Uh, I'll probably just take you through the pre-flight uh, to keep a little bit of brevity. Uh, let's go inside. i got my first story ready for you. You ready? All right. So I walk in the Super 80. I'm at LaGuardia at the time, and I'm taking out the 6.30 a.m. flight from LaGuardia to DFW. I come down to Jetbridge, and I'm going to go over to the, the gate next to mine, because at 6.15, 15 minutes earlier, another Super 80 is going to Dallas right ahead of me. So I look it up on the computer and operate, said, oh, it's one of my best friends in the whole world. Um, hardly ever get to see him. We both had four kids. We're always busy, even though we live in the same town. I'm going to go say hello to Dave before I get going on my flight. So I come in the door, and a flight attendant's there. I don't, I don't remember his name, but I said, hey, good morning. Hey, I'm just uh, going to say hello to the captain. I'm a friend of his. And he said, oh, okay. And I walk in here. It was 1999 or so. And as I come around the corner, the FO's in that seat, and he is bend, the captain is bending over his seat, putting his kit bag in with his butt up in the air, his hat on, his jacket, and that's my buddy, Dave. So I think, oh, this is just too too, too good to be true. This is going to be fun. So I reach in, the, and I touch him on the butt, and I say, and I say, Captain, can I get you anything to drink? And I touch him on the butt, and he jumps up and whacks his head on the uh, overhead panel, cuts his hat, goes flying off. He goes, what the F? And spins around. He goes, oh, you, you MF. He was just swearing at me. And I laugh, laugh, hey, hey, buddy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, a co-pilot's looking at me like I'm, I'm weird, which I am. But uh, and then I turn around, and as I'm going out of the cockpit, the flight attendant, the guy, is standing right there, and he looks really hurt. Uh, very embarrassing moment because, of course, I was not thinking, and I made it sound like uh, he was the one doing that. And so I said, oh, I am so sorry. I was just playing a joke, and I thought that was very poor taste. That was 1999. Nowadays... I'd get fired for that one. That, you know, that, that would not cut it. Um, back then, it could be a little more risky. I just wasn't thinking. Rather insensitive to me. But anyway, that's the story. Here he is. This is the bird. American Airlines colors. Three seats on the right, two on the left. Uh, somebody asked me how that affected CG. But, of course, all the they can just put ducting. They can counterbalance that anywhere in the aircraft with ducting and fuel and everything. So it's not, not an issue. But... Uh, Pretty long airplane, 30-something rows, very quiet whisper jet, with the swept wing and the engines being all the way back here. However, if you uh, naturally, if you uh, were sitting by the engines here, you could, uh, it was not quite as quiet. Uh, the MD-88, one Delta plane, unfortunately, one of these engines shelled on their MD-88 and killed a, a mom and a daughter or something uh, in, in a flight. Very terrible. Um, kind of fun when I started doing the first series of this one. This is my second video. The first one was just an orientation introduction of myself. A uh, captain contacted me from American Airlines and said, hey, I have uh, 8,000 hours on the airplane watching your videos. Look, looking forward to hearing uh, more from you. But uh, we started kind of thinking about some stories and everything. Uh, just there's just so many. So that's why I call it story time with father time. Um, there's a lot of guys with a lot more time in this airplane. It's been around a little while on the Microsoft flight simulator platform. But uh, not many of them uh, I have actual time in the aircraft. I was an instructor pilot on it too, as a check airman on it. So I'll show you what I've learned. Uh, it's going to be stream of consciousness, mostly guys, uh, and very little uh, of the expertise that I once had on it. 
uh, come in the cockpit, of course. I want to show you something. This is a normal procedures checklist. This is an expanded checklist. Uh, we had a card that was an expanded checklist. Here it is. The, usually the first person to the airplane started doing the expanded checklist, starting with the cabin safety experience. Uh, then the other person, when they showed up, you'd run this checklist, which is a normal procedures. That was to make sure that everything was done properly. So that's the big one. Gets everything done. This is the one that you go through together, the two of you, to make sure the critical items are, are set. Um, a lot, just thought I'd mention that. Um, you're able to download these checklists uh, there's folders that come, icons on your desktop that come with the download of this aircraft, and you're able to do download all these checklists. You've got uh, icing, takeoff speeds, oh man, it's just got everything, cold weather off, volume one, which is the uh, systems manual, uh, volume two, operating manual. Uh, it's tremendous the, uh, what Leonardo has given us um, for this. So today we're at uh, Long Beach on our way to Las Vegas. That's going to be our flight plan, and... Uh, that's our little route, Long Beach, up to Vegas, 40-something minute flight. Uh, probably won't get to do the whole thing. I think I'm just going to do the origination pre-flight today to get us started uh, and see what I've learned. Um, so I apologize in advance. Uh, hardly an expert, but uh, I want to show you what you can do with just a couple of days' practice. Okay? Uh, so here we go. Let's get inside, and we'll get started. Long Beach, the, note the uh, tug in the terminal. Uh, that's not good. Not good. Um, so anyway, all righty. Um, so here we go with the uh, normal checklist. We're going to come in. The first thing we do when we come in the cabin, uh, the the, the um, any any time we come in the airplane, look for the logbook. We don't touch anything until we look at the logbook. Uh, next thing we do is we look for any circuit breakers. These are modeled up here, by the way. They actually work. And behind the seat, we look for any uh, pushed out, turn off to the side, and you can see if they're popped by looking sideways. Uh, you get the... Uh, bottle in the uh, halon fire extinguisher in the green van back here is the pressure breathing equipment so we could fight fire put the hood on make sure that the moisture seal is not broken behind the seats if you have, need any life vest they're behind the seats uh, you're looking down here for uh, any kind of qrh uh, quick reaction checklist any other checklist you need you check for the uh, cabin ropes are, are available for evacuation and you check the windows locked on both sides by the by the way i'm uh Father Time, nice to meet you. I'm making a little video here. That's going to be like that, huh? That's kind of intimidating. It's uh, four stripes there. Uh, she's a captain as well. Um, but anyway, we come in and uh, we start off. Once those safety checks are done, we also check the uh, fuel levers idle, thrust levers down, uh, thrust reverse levers down, spoiler levers down, because we put any kind of um, we put any kind of power on the aircraft. Uh, there's a good chance uh, it can hurt someone. So the flap rubber's up, and it's matching the gauge. Um, if you come off to the side here, we also want to check, make sure the uh, aux, uh, hydraulic pumps, you can leave those on high, but the transfer and the aux pumps are off. Go to the overhead and make sure the windshield wiper is off. And now we can come up and do the uh, battery. As again, this is stream of consciousness, guys, because press it once, uh, bring it down, that's APU master. That a boy, Jeff. Uh, once and press it again, it goes sideways to lock it in. Okay. And um, external power is available. We can turn that on. Uh, now that available light means that the the volts and freaks are good. But of course, if you wanted to check that, you could come up here to external power and check 115. I forget. It's plus or minus five. 400 plus or minus 8 or something like that. But anyway, you want to make sure right now it's reading the 404 volts and freaks. Uh, before we turn on the battery, what I should have done is battery voltage. It's looking for a minimum, I think, of 24. It's all the way up at 28 with the AP running, uh, with external power running. And amp, it's uh, charging. You can see that. with the Before I turn on external power, I should have checked that. And it would have been discharging a little bit. But those are the battery uh, things and the external power. So we got that on, stream of consciousness, getting this all done, and speed brake, lever circuit brakes, we did all that. Okay, and uh, so next thing, once we get that done, we can come down to uh, air conditioning. If uh, Do you want to uh, set, you know, uh, get the APU running at this point? Is it necessary to get it running? Well, uh, it's 17 degrees Celsius, out, which is about 60. Let's say we're going to go ahead and get that running. So... Uh, we're going to go ahead. We can start it now. We can do it, right? We can go down and hold it. 
and you're supposed to hold it so you see it, the RPM start to rise. And while that's going, we'll uh, do start with the uh, the rest of the stuff. Uh, down on this, the panel here, we've got the emergency lights. You, do, you can do the test on the, them. Put them on, emergency lights not armed, right? That's, that's what you're looking for there. Turn that off. These are pedostatic. We don't do anything with these. Turn on one, it turns them all on. Um, we'll turn those on after engine start. Uh, all the windshield ice is off. You turn on the anti-ice for the windshield. And then uh, anytime you've got power on the aircraft, you should also have on your position. This is your strobe and position. A unique thing to the Super 80 is that it, uh, the strobes don't come on until you go airborne, so it's automatic. So right now we can just put on the position lights. They have to be on whenever you have power on the aircraft. Uh, if we go back to the overhead, you can see APU is running. Uh, so if we wanted an APU to power the aircraft now, we can go APU power on, APU power on. Uh, and if we wanted it to cool the cabin, we uh, have to turn on the APU air. I'm not going to go colder. That's not necessary. And then I'm going to turn on the uh, APU supplies. But you see nothing really happens. And the reason nothing happens is because you have to open these two cross feed valves right there so if you're not getting air that's why and how do you know you have air pressure because it's right there and it's powering both packs that's your pneumatic pressure okay so uh, you can see that it's only running around um, at 20 for engine start we'll be turning the packs off to get uh, a, a more air for the engine start okay so we got power on the aircraft uh, we've got we don't need the external power anymore they may come on once they hear that APU start and ask if they can pull the power and the way we do that we can say Roger you're clear to pull it so we'll take the uh, GPU is off doors and slide we just have the forward main going and uh, let's get our GSX stuff going here I'm having fun I'm having fun so a request refueling first refueling of all refueling truck is on its way and um, want to get that going first Please because don't load aircraft until the fuel truck arrives and ask to do it yeah we must get that started and now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to uh, well, weight and balance actually what we really should do right on the flight is a uh, technical log make sure there's nothing if there's any action to you uh, request uh, maintenance on it don't have to do that and uh, it's cool this electronic flight folder here guys has some uh, flight documents will be in here eventually sim brief operational flight plan right there fuel truck with is in weather position. forecast uh, but please we're don't go wait aircraft balance. until the fuel please use your airplane fuel system to set the desired fuel uh, let's quantity. take a look uh, look at zero zero fuel eight we're gonna go sim brief and it'll update And that's good. And we can go back to the uh, box. Database is good today, as I mentioned, is January 15th. And uh, this is good to January 25th. Position in it. There's no IRSs or anything. You don't have to worry about that aligning. KLGB. KLGB. I only put that in to make sure it's reasonable. Right there, reasonable. Looks like the uh, G GNS position is uh, reasonable. It's kind of nice you don't have to wait for IRSs to align, right? And put that in, get those aligned, and uh, we can actually go, if you go down to the box, I, on the right-hand side, I'm going to go ahead and go menu, run the eight cars from over here, eight cars, AOC standard, pre-flight, we'll uh, init data, and init request, takes a little while, Boom, did a boom, boom. It's American Airlines Flight 123. There it is. Return. Weight and balance. Okay. Trip fuel, taxi fuel, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. All right. So, uh, trip fuel is 16.1. Um, I'm getting this off the sim brief. Uh, block fuel, rather, 16.1. Uh, we have taxi fuel is 800. 800, oh, 16, 1, 0, 0, block fuel, 
uh, it's better. And uh, if we take this over here, our burn for the whole trip is uh, 6.3, and our taxi fuel is 800. 6.3 and 800. Eight, 800. And then trip fuel, 6 point, well, 6,300. So you got to write it out longhand. All right, send it. And what this is going to generate is a our initial closeout, let's call it. It's uh, pre this. So this is a init data, weight balance, flight plan. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. There it is. Flight plan. Beautiful. And uh, return. Messages. Crew message. And there's our initial initial data. Okay, uh, we got that going for us. Now I'm going to load up the uh, box here before I finish the overhead. Root KLGB to uh, Las Vegas, KL KLAS. And, oh, we got our flight plan over here. Flight plan. Do, do, do. Uh, yes, uh, page one, page two, page three. Okay, very good. And uh, company route, let's put that in. KLGB, KLGB, KL. And remember, this is not going to load up the SIDS or the STARS. Well, we'll not load those up. Activate. And execute. Therefore, it's only going to Missin because our route is actually the Zoom 3 to Missin off runway 30. So, Zoom 3, you put in the runway first. That way, it eliminates some of the um, SIDs that are not applicable. Zoom 3 and Missin transition. And that's that one. And then we come back to departures arrival. We're going to execute that one. Uh, departures arrival, index. Arrival is the Rogers to the um, 26 left ILS. So I'm going to put in 26 left ILS, 26 left LZ. Uh, don't worry about that right there. And also this one with the mission transition route and execute it. So then you come back in. I like to start at the beginning as if you were talking to these guys. Let's go ahead and set this all up. Um, 31,000 on the performance. We'll come back and check everything in just a minute. Uh, fuel scheduled um, was 16.1 and right now it's saying on the fuel gauge 15, we'll put 15.9 Burnt a little fuel using the APU. 15.9. Uh, zero fuel weight is 113.4. 13.4. Oh, I know what I have to do on the fuel. I have to put in 15.9 uh, and then N. Fifteen point nine slash n. There we go. And uh, zero fuel weight is uh, thirteen four one one three point four. Excellent. And the reserve plus alternate is uh, alternate's coming back here to Los Las Vegas Los Angeles right uh, Long Beach uh, eight point zero. 8.0 reserves and the cost index is 35 in here and uh, on here cost index is 35 uh, okay and uh, let's see cruise winds 305 at 91 305 305 at wow 91 91 Tailwind, huh? And uh, 
uh, temp deviation is uh, plus one, plus one. That's our deviation from standard. And transition altitude is 18. That's page 101. And takeoff data. So to do the takeoff data, come over here. Uh, you know, I'm talking like I'm an instructor, guys. It's more stream of consciousness. Just having a little fun here trying to figure this stuff all out. All right, so we got Long Beach in here. Let's zoom this in a little bit so we can see what we're talking about. We're going to go to runway 30. Runway 30. Remember, I haven't done many of these flights, but I've been watching Mustafa. Uh, flap them. I'll put in Optimum. I think uh, maybe I'll just put in an 11 flap. Got plenty of runway here. I can't remember what American, what we used to do. I think we always tried to do an 11 flap takeoff. I just can't remember exactly. Um, Got to do the uh, weather here, guys, uh, for Long Beach. And the weather is presently, the winds are, uh, actually, they say they're they're calm in 3008. Calm in 3008. So uh, I'll leave them at calm and altimeter. 3008 and now uh, outside air temperature is 16 you don't have to put Celsius because it assumes it 16 anti ice is off forced to take off max now we'll let it do a reduce the cam packs are on uh, runway length reduction from the start nope we're gonna zero zero there and then uh, finally our planned uh, takeoff weight is going to be estimate takeoff weight 1287. So it's actually 128676. 128. How about this? 128676. Calculate. It's thinking about it. All right, flaps 11 takeoff, normal takeoff, uh, select uh, TO. Um, yeah, it's not a, it's not having us do a flex takeoff. Uh, hmm. uh, 32, 36, 45. So let's go to the box. 32, 36, 45, 132, 136, 145. You got to put it in twice. Once there, and uh, once up here, I guess I can use my um, kind of cool. 45. I can use my Logitech panel. 145. We'll talk about the rest of that flight guidance panel. We get started. This just bothers me. I'm gonna. It's out of sequence. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna arm that now. All right, so um, one guy usually loads the box, and the other person uh, starts doing the interior. I kind of got out of sequence there, loaded the box first. Let's go ahead and do the interior inspection, and I'm doing it by memory. So it's meant to be done by memory. Then the checklist is challenge and response that you do between the two of you to make sure you got uh, everything that you needed, right? Uh, coming to the upper overhead, ground service, nothing to do up here. It's the observer's audio panel. Uh, passenger oxygen quantity is good. Uh, uh, mechanic call is right here. Flight recorder. I guess we uh, are supposed to do this. And then we go to the messages on the overhead. How about that, Jeff? And uh, flight recorder. Oh, I know what you do. Um, you go up top. That was cool. Not really. Um, and uh, once you do the flight recorder, you uh, got to check something. I think it's on here. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Flight recorder off. But uh, anyway, feel free to uh, help me out there when you guys get a chance. All right, so... Um, Turn that off. Uh, this is uh, all my fire stuff. These will be tested here in a minute. But we can press this button. And that tests all the lights there. Um, if you want to uh, do your overhead uh, console lights, a little bit of flood. Do these while you're here. 
uh, circuit breakers are in if you really wanted to um, check, you know, to see. You can go off to the side. And that's the best way to check to see if you see any white bands here. If uh, any of them are popped. And if they are popped, we do not have the right to uh, reset them. It all has to be done through through maintenance. Okay, starting back at the top, guys. These are transfer switches. Like you see a lot of times on an aircraft down here, uh, the transfer between the different subsystems. These are uh, FO for the CADC, command bars, flight directors, radios, uh, all sorts of things. They're all at the 12 o'clock position. Cockpit voice recorder, test it. Hold it. Come across here. This is a CSDZ. I guess they want us to reset the generators for some reason. We're not going to reset the APU generator because it is operating. Uh, coming across, Boltzmann, we already talked about that. Um, oh, if you want to, I know what it is. Flight recorder. That's what we're supposed to do. Guys, why don't you tell me? Um, so we come up here. I don't know what's going on with that, right? You come in here, turn this down like this, hold it, and you put in in here the day. So today is 15 January. Basically, that way the flight recorder is marked on the tape for the proper date and time, month, and we are first flight number one. We're actually American 123. And this just tells you this is the first leg of the day. And insert it. Boop. Like that. And then we go back to the upper overhead. And we can put the flight recorder back on. I knew there was something that we had to do with that. I just couldn't remember exactly what it was. So. Okay. Back here. On the overhead, uh, got the AP. How am I doing? I'm getting through it, right? For a guy who's never really flown this thing in, in a long time, um, I'm, I'm pleased that I'm getting this far. So um, we've got the APU airs on. The fire agents are both off. Uh, these are the doors closed. Master, we got the APU running. Agents, we don't want to disarm. We're going to do an emergency power check. What you do is that, and then you come to the. Uh, what that does is it op opens, it activates a static inverter. You get emergency power and use light goes on. Static inverter, which converts uh, DC to AC, comes on. And uh, I think that you actually, at this point, you'll see a little bit of a draw on the battery. It's a negative draw because you put the battery as a connected to a static inverter, which would power the, I'm going to leave this on battery voltage here. And uh, you turn that back off, it um, converts it to AC in the event that you lost both your generators. Um, APU's normal battery is on. So, uh, start pump. You don't use this um, to start the APU in, if you have external going. So, we had external going. So, we start the APU. I didn't have to turn that on. If I didn't have any external power, let's say it wasn't available, wanted to start the APU, I would have heard to turn that start pump on. Uh, engine ignition, we don't have to do anything with that right now. Fuel heat is uh, off. Uh, these are start selectors. They're off. We talked about the pneumatic pressure. When we turn off the uh, bleeds, that'll uh, the uh, packs that'll bump right right up there. Fuel pumps should have had one of these on for um, either the, any of the centers or the, the uh, right. One of those should have been on for the APU running. These are the aux tanks that are on the MD83. A little bit higher fuel load. We talked about all the uh, keto stack, which we'll get after engine start. Airfield oil, just the windshield, the defog is no needed, that's the engine ice. Don't need to put those on in today's conditions. Uh, A-cars, oh, we got a message. Let's go see this while we're here. Uh, return, crew message, return, crew message. Uh, I guess that's it. We don't have the final closeout just yet. We'll come back to, come back to that as well. Okay, um, we've got these. Uh, I'm going to reset that light. And uh, thunderstorm lights are off. Cockpit floods are off. Circuit breaker lights are off. Standby compass light is off. 
Um, attendant call. We're going to do this. All right. We're going to push the PA and emergency light test. Emergency lights off. And they, they called the tellers and we reset it. Isn't that cool? Uh, Annie Skid. Come down here and make sure left and right upboard Annie Skid is working. Back to arm. Uh, stall test. System one. I remember this. I thought I remember the uh, stick shaking when you did that too. Maybe, maybe I'm just imagining that. You guys, you heard enough of that one? Wait, there's more. Let me go. That's over with. Um, we're going to do the uh, max speed warning test. Over speed. Over speed. Nice. Over speed. Your damper is. Um, uh, you got to turn. I think you got to turn that to override. And it says your damper off. Back to on. Um, and then. Mock cool, normal, override. I don't know. Mock trim. Let's do that. Mock trim and up. Turn that off. Ice FOD reset test. Ice FOD alert down here on the EOAP, whatever that is. Um, air conditioning valve, these are the pressures right here. That's the uh, cabin supply. So if you see a uh, cabin temperature is, uh, what is that? 23, which is 73. And they're at the 12 o'clock, so that's good. Cabin supply, it's up at 30, so it's working to keep that cabin nice and warm. So the cabin supply is higher than the temperature. Just something. Venturi is something for usually smoke removal to trying to get some airflow over the E and E valve. Uh, HP bleed off. You know what? Did that ever go down all the way? Yeah. I put the HP bleed off instead of all the way to auto when I put that on. So that was wrong. Um, let me go this, test this. It's in standby and then you punch off the transfer light. You've got to set up the uh, airfield altitude. Uh, you can do this two ways. At American, we used to keep in the departure airfield in case we came back uh, for Long Beach with the, with the departure uh, altimeter. And halfway over, we change it to Las Vegas. Other airlines just put in your destination. So I'll take a look at that. Hang on. All right, so the Las Vegas field elevation is 2181. Kind of high, huh? Three hundred. So ways up there. Now, if we ever came back and uh, depressurized and came back into Long Beach, we'd have to set this back up for Long Beach. I apologize; it's taking me a while, guys. Such is the nature of the uh, the mouse wheel. I've flown into Long Beach before when I was on the Super 8. I even did it once in the 75. 2181 on a rare, and then 3012 was the altimeter. 2181, 3012, rate limiter is there. Primary standby is checked and reset. It's all good. You got a cabin pressure thing. So take a look at this. So at 10,000 foot airplane altitude, you're looking for about a 1.0 on the diff cabin different note what the cabin should be. So uh, 10,000 feet, about a 1.0. It's pretty cool. It's a schedule. So if you ever look up here and wonder uh, if you're scheduling, like right now, we have zero pressure differential and our cabin altitude is around 30 or 40 feet. The elevation here is like 60 or 70, so that's good. Air conditioning shut off, override, we don't have to do that. Ram air uh, is off, that's good. Enunciator tests. Hold this, take a look around. All these enunciator works. Down lower, looking for any anything burnt out. It's good. Let me just check the radio panel here. That, that wasn't good. That wasn't good, Pa. Somebody got myself all spun around. A lot of guys would reset the video right now. I don't bother. I, I like you to watch me struggle. Not really. Um, Alright, enough of that nonsense. Whew.
That was scary. Um, so let's go back up to the overhead, see if we can find our way back to the enunciator reset. And there we go. That's off. Wipers are off. Uh, cockpit door. The way you close the door, just turn around and you hit deny. That's the, the little trick on the uh, overhead. Hit deny. And if you turn back around, door is shut. So we're saying the flight attendants came up and, and told us uh, they weren't ready yet because we haven't even boarded yet. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll get that going. We've got the, we've got the fuel on board that we needed right. We're going to request boarding. Boarding requested. And we're not going to board the... No, nobody... Crew's already on Passengers board. Passengers bus is coming. All right, we'll let them board. And we'll continue with our checklist. Didn't want to do that too uh, soon because... Lord, Lord knows it's going to take me a while. Let's take a look outside. They want me to open the aft cargo door. Okay. We can do that. And we're going to go to the EFB. We're going to go back here. We're going to go to aircraft services. And F cargo door. I think it was open. Yeah. So that's all good. Waiting for your action. Open the rear exit. Requires hydraulic pressure. Oh, they want to open the stairs. Okay. Very cool. So let's go over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting there. Uh, turn on the aux pump. Back to the electronic flight bag. I love this stuff, guys. I love this. Passengers boarding starting. Yeah, ash there. Yeah. All right. People coming on board. Here they come. I think I'm doing pretty good. I mean, it ain't pretty, but I'm getting through it, baby. Thanks to Mustafa on Twitch and here great series on this stuff and boy I'll tell you this uh, Leonardo gives you everything you use I'm in the TFDI uh, development team I'm actually not in development I'm sorry quality assurance I'm basically just a flight tester uh, and um, I and I know what it takes watching these guys how hard they're, they're working to get a study level a study level what is that right I think this is study level. If I was flying the Super 80, I could use this beast to help me uh, prepare for recurrent training. I had a PMDG uh, 777 over on uh, P3D when I was 777 captain. I've only been flight simming about 10 months, by the way. It'll be a year in March. Um, FO talked me into it for my one of my retirement fun times. Uh, I don't make any money at this. I think we have 1,520 subscribers as of today. Maybe a little more than that. Maybe 1,540. Um, I do it to give back to the community. It's a challenge. It keeps my mind active. Uh, the, just the managing the, the cameras and the presets. And, but man, P3D was a real learning experience. But anyway, um, but if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that's cool. Um, and liking the video, that would be really cool. I'll do the, as many of these as I can. I'll try to keep them interesting. I'll tell some stories along the way. Story time with Father Time. Well, here's a story for you. I'm doing a walk around in Santa Domingo on an Airbus A300-600. And all these, I'm walking towards, I finished the walk around, I'm walking towards the uh, front door. I'm sorry, it was Haiti. Haiti. And I get confronted by security guys, guys with AK-47s. So they stay right there, and they tell me to move off to the side. And a black limo comes up, and out jumps Jimmy Carter, President Carter from the United States. He used to be a president. He was down there monitoring the elections. It was probably 1992 or so, 1993, I forget when it was. And uh, he sat in the cockpit from, you know what, it was, it was Santa Domingo, Martin the Dominican uh, elections, sat in the cockpit the whole way and talked to us about life and being in the Navy. I live in Connecticut, and he was telling me all about living in Connecticut. Jimmy Carter, what a, that was really, uh, I don't care what you, know, what you think of him as a uh, president, he's a real good man. Uh, God bless him. Anyway. Pretty cool. Look, look at this. There's some smart people out here that do this stuff, aren't they? Uh, anyway, let's go back inside and finish the inspection. 
That's what happens when you leave your preset views on when you leave. Um, okay, so where were we? Right, right about now, the uh, FO is probably going, this guy's freaking nuts. Um, so we did all this. Um, go down to the panel. Coming across. Uh, we are required to do, I'm going to use, uh, put an uh, off station frequency here, 111.15. And uh, you got to hit the auto land test. Takes a little while to do it. You got to, it's got to be an off, off field ILS, and you know that because you get a look fail over here. Uh, Passengers bus is coming. anyway. Okay, so 145. So let's take a look at the sit altitude out of Long Beach, and I'll bring this over to you. And uh, airports, Long Beach, SID, and we are doing the. Uh, Zoom. Sid. Sid. Zoom. Initial altitude is 17. Take a look at that in just a moment. So we can come to the uh, altitude here. And put in uh, 17. Hey, let me use my handy dandy here. A little, little faster, right? 17. Uh, we'll put in uh, runway heading for now. Runway heading, airfield diagram is uh, 301. And Passengers boarding starting. 301. Now, I remember taking off with the uh, bank limiter, I think it was in 15 degrees, like that. Um, because it will, I, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave it over on the uh, in the normal normal bank. It was because you couldn't bank over 15 degrees if you were d below clean min maneuver. Okay. Uh, okay. So back on the uh, this panel up here, 145 is V2. Um, I know that they uh, mock select. He presetted them preset the mock on here I'm not going to do that 301 vertical speeds good autopilot uh, one I think he did this test the auto land test on two uh, we can do this flight directors we can turn those on 17 is our initial altitude all that's good yeah I don't know how they did the auto land test guys it doesn't really matter figure that out later I'm um, coming down here check my oxygen you just basically go to the test mode, get a view, check the mic, press the key, key the mic here uh, while you're on enter down here, and uh, that you can hear yourself talking on the mic. That checks the flow, and uh, you put these two switches down together, test and hold both of them, and you get a, a flow light as well. And check the quantity there. Uh, down here, uh, range, we'll take off. I like to take off with um, the lower range there to start. Right about at 10 miles. Uh, make sure you're in map mode. Turn on your panel lighting. We're going to be an all daytime flight, but I'll bring it up just to say I did it. Flood, panel, static air switch is in normal. This is your floor lights, bright or dim. They're off. Um, here are your flap speeds, flaps and slat speeds. Man, they are really, really high. Boarding is complete. That was fast. Used to boarding 300 people. Uh, they're right there if you need them. Get your bug set. You just got to click on it because they already were set. That's your clean min maneuver, 190. That's with the flaps and slats up. This is your um, uh, V1. That's your V2 there, the orange bug. And your rotate speed. And I do believe that's it. So there's your headings. Double check those. No one wanted flags. Okay, localizer fail. And uh, I'm just going to put this in here, guys. I have to relook at uh, that auto land test to see how to do that. All right. 113.2. Just put that in here. You know what? You have one. Thirteen two. Okay. 
135, 134, all those are all good. Um, okay, um, I do believe that's good. Let's come down the middle. Uh, so over here, we got our bugs set, our headings are set. Uh, we've got our, our glare shield control panel, remote control panel is all set up here. Uh, we've got vertical speed is zero, fuel quantity forward and aft. Nope, uh, the fuel quantity is good, 13.9. Uh, fire bell here. We're going to test, um, we come to the middle. Loop one test, that's the fault test, right? I'm going to do something here. And then we test one, we test two, we'll get the fire light. I think I have to um, press and hold this. Yeah, I'll have to review that test too, guys. There it is. I was, you have to use my mouse wheel. So when you do... Um, when you do one, that's just testing one loop, but you get two, two loops have to detect it. So there's one, and you go up to the enunciator, fire detector loop, right, and press the other one. That's two fire loops detecting, give you a fire fault. Right engine. Fire left engine. Fire and you got to be able to make sure engine. you can silence it here. Okay. Fire left engine. Take that off, and that's done. That was good. That was worth it. Um, art switch, we're going to leave on because it's a max power, actually a max power takeoff. Um, so, uh, yeah. Takeoff flex, no? It's not a takeoff. Um, that was funny. I thought I was expecting more of a flex mode there. Uh, coming back down here, radar. You got to power that thing up. Power it up. Do a test. Check both radars. Work. Power back down. You can preset the pitch and bank on there. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, go to GSX. Whew. Uh, boarding complete. Repair for pushback. Uh, do you want to start engine before pushback? No. Okay. Uh, over here, uh, altimeter is 3007. Um, I, I think American Airlines, we used to typically set the engine out Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. under the bar, and the engine out today is 840, which is 800 feet AGL. Should have gone the other way, right? But I didn't. Still not done with my pre-flight. We're 48 minutes in. Okay, there's 840. Uh, okay. Departure checks completed. Bypass pin inserted. All right, spoilers down. We got to uh, check the uh, takeoff warning. That's good. Um, spoiler handers down. Trim wheel. Check this way. It moves. Check the other way. And uh, we do the manual trim. Same thing. We check that. Locking gear. And the other way too. All right, and uh, down here we've got to set the CG and the flaps. So we're, I know we're I know we're using flaps 11. So let's set flaps 11. Pardon me while I struggle with this. I think I can actually have a uh, throttle quadrant. It's not what the one I was looking for, right? But uh, CG, um, did we know what our CG is? Let me try to find that here. Electronic flight bag, here, weight and balance, here it is, uh, CG 13.5. Well, a little sensitive. So sensitive. All right, flaps 11, 13.5, and now we got to put the... Trim.
in there. Why isn't that moving? Longitude to trim. Let me see something here. There it is. Okay, guys. Sorry you had to see that. 13.5, uh, 11, and you line up the green with there. And that's the takeoff trim. Um, continue on down. We'll set in our squawk. See if I can get that to work properly. I know at one point I had it working great. Uh, squawk, yeah. Um, three, two, one, four. I'm making that up. And uh, T-A-R-A. Three, two, one, four, A-T-C. I can't wait to take this on a VAT sim. We'll go, say we're odd number, so we'll go number one. Uh, active data. That data is for A cars. It's number one, VHF. Number two, VHF. That's all good. Cell call we don't need. ADFs we don't need. Uh, trim. We got the... Uh, wing aileron trim are set we can set the uh this to uh take off and arm it it's all fine uh let me see master caution what do we have up here that's a master caution let's see power fire detector loop hmm fire left engine Oh, I guess I had it uh, on, so that's that's off now. All right, so left generator off, CSD pressure is low, parking brakes are on, left engine fuel engine, fuel engine pressure is low, flight recorder off, flight director is on. Okay, um, so now let's go and do the uh, normal checklist. We'll bring that over. We can actually do it um, on the electronic flight bag. That might be uh, a more professional way to do it here you guys let me see if I can find that get you all set up electronic flight folder um, I'm not gonna um, set up my Navigraph I have it here you could obviously sign in there if you wanted all right flight recorder uh, test and check we did that we're aligned FMS GPS checked emergency lights are armed cabin signs are up oh, we didn't do that let's do that cabin signs are Whew. Made that look tougher than it was. Uh, emergency lights are armed. Cabin signs are on. Windshield and the ice switch is on. We did that. Uh, engine sink selectors off. It's off. Star warning tested. Air conditioning shutoff valves are auto. Fire protection is tested. We did that. Thrust rating panel. I did not test the thrust rating panel. Hence the uh, reason for a checklist, right? Thrust rating panel. Uh, we don't have to do a test. We just have to press this. tested no mode take off uh, we're not doing the flex today kind of disappointed I was looking forward to setting the flex power takeoff uh, try a fuel quantity in uh, kilograms but we're in pounds we'll get the, what we need altimeters are set we already checked those um, actually that's a lie because I did set 3007 here 3007 there and 3007 over there in a cross check with fuel elevation of 48 feet that all looks good uh, back to the uh, checklist. Fuel quantity altimeters. Fuel shutoff uh, levers. Sh they're shut off. They are shut off. And remember, this is a checklist that you're doing after the origination pre-flight. Uh, cabin pressure lever auto. We got it auto. Cockpit crew checklist is complete. And uh, all right. We're going to be clear to start. Should we keep going? Should we keep going, guys? Uh, load sheet. Let's check our final load numbers. Load sheet final in here. Take a look at that. Zero fuel weight, 113, and acknowledge it. Um, man, I love this airplane. This is so cool. Uh, zero fuel weight is good. I want to check this if you wanted to. Right, you can go in it. Page two. Um, update 13.4, zero fuel at 113.4, reserves a good fuel, uh, to, to, to take off fuel 15.3, that sounds good, that's one page one or two, uh, two, 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 take off weight 128.7, this says 129.3, that's good, flight with 310 max, uh, max zero fuel weight, CG, 
is uh, 10. So max takeoff weight is 13.5. That's what we have set. And uh, PAX 142 security is okay. Um, looks good. So this person would be on legs uh, for takeoff. Oh, I got to go back to menu. And uh, this. And this person would be on legs. And I would be on takeoff page. But first, what we would have to do after we check the database was good, right? Um, index, ident. When we went through this, we never really did go through it together. Position and it, that's all set. We would go through the route, walking through the pages, uh, make sure we get the right SIDs and arrivals in there. We go through perf and it together, make sure those are all filled up. The takeoff page together, make sure that's all set. TNT set. And uh, last thing we do is go through the legs and walk through the legs one at a time while we're in plan mode and uh, make sure that all of our legs cross-check with our SID and our star. Uh, I won't belabor you that at this point. That's for another video. Hey, um, that's it. So uh, that was the origination pre-flight. We're ready for pushback here. Uh, flail through it. I've only done this a few times. Uh, Mustaf, I want to thank him once again. I really enjoyed his videos. I worked hard to uh, study them and getting up at 3 or 4 in the morning to knock that out because I was also working on TFDI plus I had a lot of a uh, honey-do list things to do here. Um, I'm just realizing this little guy here and never, never tested that one. Cool. Never tested that one. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep studying. I'll get the test down a little better. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we are ready to go. Uh, we've got all uh, normal stuff here. Um, it's just a little bit. I have to, I'm going to have to run the before start checklist here. Um, and uh, we'll get going uh, for the pushback. So uh, I'll get us started pushing back uh, in just a minute. Um, I'll come back. I'll make another video doing that, see how far I can get. But that's the origination pre-flight done by a, a 2,000 hours in this thing. Former Czech airman. Uh, pretty rusty. But uh, pretty cool. Don't you think? Great job, Leonardo. Uh, really great job. So from the birthplace of the uh, MD-11 Super 80 McDonnell Douglas, Long Beach, California, on our way to Las Vegas. That's video number two on the Mad Dog, as Delta says, or the Super 80, as Americans say. We'll see you. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Thanks a lot. Father Time's out.